Um, we already covered the basic HTML and CSS. Uh, today we will be working on applied visual designs. Okay, so let's start off this. Create visual balance using the text align property. Okay, the section of the circular focuses on the first group of challenges built on schema card layout. Okay, so this is a uh, text align property, CSS, and uh, last line to meet the left and right edges of the line. Okay. Uh, text is often a large part of web content. CSS has several options for how to align it with text align property. Okay, so text align center will text center align the text, right align and left align. Okay, align the H4 text text which says Google to the center h4 h4 which says Google okay so only one of this is there so that is why we can style on this text align center okay uh, then justify the paragraph tag which contains information about how Google was founded okay so uh, I will explain justify so before this justify property you guys can see that it's every line is not meeting the borders okay so this is not looking very good after we justify the content okay you see every line now every paragraph's line is meeting the line end okay and text line center will be a uh, center line the text that was simple Next up is adjust the width of element using the width property. Okay. Set is the width of the image to 220 pixels. Okay, add a width property to the entire card and set it to an absolute value of 245 pixels. Use the full card class to select the element. Card with card. Okay. Use the. Okay, it's already there. Width property or right. Width property and give it 245 pixels. Okay, so it's. Uh, width is now uh, shrinked, I would say. Adjust the height of an element using the height property. Okay, height property. Uh, height property. Okay. Height property is 25 pixel. You may need to be at 100% soon. Okay. Use the strong tag to make text bold. Wrap a strong tag around. Okay, Stanford. Strong tag is basically it's, it will just bold out the, the text that we have. In it. You tag to underline the text. Okay, PhD students. So we have to underline this. Uh, PhD students. Okay. This is underline. You can do this underline thing with CSS as well, but this is a more, uh, it's a good approach because here if we use CSS, we have to write a selector. Use the EM tag to tell you side, okay, italic. Wrap an, uh, wrap an EM tag around the, uh, okay. So to emphasize the text, we use EM tag, this display text on. This probably applies the CSS of to the element. Okay, font style will be italic. Let's see. Wrap an EM around the contents of paragraph tag. EM tag. A 
all right so the now the whole of uh, this paragraph is italic use the s tag to strike through text okay to strike through text which is when a horizontal line cuts across the character you can use the s tag it shows that a section of text is no longer valid with the s tag the browser applies the css of text decoration line through to the element okay wrap the s tag to google inside the tag and then add the word alphabet besides it which shows not which should not have the strike through format wrap this one in s tag in s tag and uh, then add the word alphabet Now create a horizontal line using the HR tag. Add an HR tag element under. Add. This can be used to define a change in topic or to make any separate groups of content. Add an HR tag under the underneath the H4, which contains the card title. This is this is the self closing tag. Uh, so uh, this is H4 tag. Now you can see that horizontal line is there. Run the test and go to next one. Adjust the background property of text. Overall background or the color of the text to make the foreground easily readable. You can add a color element holding the text. We want to emphasize this challenge uses RDA instead of hex codes or normal RGB code. Okay. Alpha level of opacity RGB A. So the alpha value can range from one which is fully opaque or solid color to zero, which is fully transparent or clear. Opacity. This means that you don't have to completely block out the background. You will use background color RGBA for this challenge. It is a dark gray color that is nearly transparent, giving the low opacity. To make the text stand out more, adjust the background color of the H4 element to the given RGBA value. H4 element, okay. So what we will be doing is that ground color and that is this one also for h4 remove the height property and add padding of 10 pixel padding is 10 pixel okay Okay, so I was just thinking about it. All right. Yeah. And this is the size of header versus a paragraph tag. The font size of header tags H1 through H6 should generally be larger than the font size of paragraph tags. This makes it easier for the user to visually understand the layout and level of importance of everything on the page. You can use font size property to adjust the size of the text in L. To make the heading significantly larger than the paragraph, change the font size of H4 tag to 27 pixels. Font size should be 27 pixels. Okay. The add a box shadow to a card element like. I could do a card like element box shadow box shadow properties applies one or more shadows to an element box shadow property takes values for offset how far to push the shadow horizontally for the element horizontally okay 
of set y how far to push the shadow vertically from the element blur radius spread radius and color is that in that order okay the blur radius and spread a radius values are optional multiple box shadows can be created by using compounds key separate properties of each shadow box shadow element here is an example of css to create multiple shadows with some blur at mostly transparent black colors okay rcp the element now has an id of thumbnail with this selector use the example css values above to place a okay what is that thumb nail and we have to apply this one okay so what happened okay that is id it's not a class so now observe that this card has a box shadow and now if I will remove this one okay now it has a single one uh, single border and with this okay yeah so I was just trying to understand why we have to uh, give multiple box shadows so that is the reason you see the borders are more uh, darker than the uh, this area um, a little away from the border so because the first shadow is more than the second one uh, it's 10 pixel and 20 pixel away from this so that's why and this one is 66 pixel so this one is darker as well you see the opacity is 23 awesome Decrease the opacity of an element. The opacity property in CSS is used to adjust the opacity or the transparency of an element. The value of 1 is opaque, which is not transparent at all. The value of 0 0.5 is half through, see through, and is completely transparent. The value given will apply to the entire element, whether that's an image with some transparency or the foreground and background colors for a block of text. The value given will apply to the entire element, whether that's an image with some transparency or the foreground or background colors for a block. Set the opacity of an anchor tag to 0 0.7 using links class to select them. Okay, so we'll use opacity here. Opacity is 0 0.7. All right. If you see this one, this is now uh, invisible almost. Yeah, now it's better. Okay, cool. Use the text transform property to make text uppercase. Optimize a convenient way to make sure that text on web page appears consistently without having to change the text content of okay the following table shows how the values should uh, change the example text transform the lowercase uppercase capitalize okay and initial initial meaning use the default value and have it use it as a link from the parent element then default use the original text okay to uppercase using the text transform property text transform is equal to what to say capitalize capitalize okay now h4 element H4 element should be uh, capitalized, but it's not. So let's see. H4 is this one. Text transform. 
happy the lines okay what's happening here so let's see that lowercase what will it be lowercase is working and happy the lines what is not working okay so <laughs> That is not capitalized. The property, the value is uppercase. Okay. Now go to the next one. Uh, set the font size of multiple heading elements. The font size property is used to specify how large the text is. The rule can be used for multiple elements to create visual consistency of text on a page in this challenge you will set the values of all h1 to h6 text to balance the heading sizes set the font size of the h1 so h1 is now 68 pixel oh oh no what am i doing font no font size is 68 pixel and h2 is font size is 52 pixel page 3 is font size is equal to 40 pixel okay and h4 is font size is 32 pixel h5 is font size is 21 pixel god this is a long exercise font size is 14 pixel Thank God. Go to the next one. Set the font weight for multiple heading elements. So the font weight is now uh, you set each tag the last challenge. Here you will address the fonts font weight. Sets how thick or thin characters are in a section of text. Okay, thick or thin. Now font weight property set font weight property. Let's copy this. Uh, it should be 800. Now it's one tag. So what was the difference? Okay. And now 600 pixel. 600 not pixels and next one is 500 pixel and next one is 400 sorry next up is 300 next up is 200 all right so go to next one set the fonts font size of paragraph text in css is not limited to headings it can be applied to any element containing this one change the value of font size of the property to 16 pixel set the line height of paragraph CSS offers the line height property to change the height of each element, each line in a block of text. As the name suggests, it changes the amount of vertical space that each line of text gets. Okay, add a line height property of 25 pixel line height property to 25 pixel. Okay. Adjust the hover state of an anchor tag. 
uh, this channel will touch on the usage of pseudo classes. Pseudo class is a keyword that can be added to selectors in, uh, in order to select a specific state of the element. So basically, some elements have different states, like anchor tag. I mean, if it's uh, it's hovered or if it's not hovered, it was clicked or not, something like that. Okay, with some elements, not with elements like uh, paragraph. I mean, not not such properties. Okay, but they still have the hover property and, and uh, uh, you can also apply them pseudo classes on on, uh, on paragraphs. Okay, so. For example, the styling of an anchor tag can be changed for its hover state using the hover pseudo class selector. Here is the CSS to change the color of the anchor tag. Okay. So the code editor has a CSS rule to select all anchor tags black. Black. Okay. Add a rule so that when the user hovers over the A tag, the color is blue. So that is very simple. Hover is color is blue all right so now you see this color is blue next one is change an element's relative position okay it treats each html element as its own box which is usually referred to as css box model block level elements automatically start uh, on a new line while inline items uh, sit within surrounding contents like images or spans. Okay, so there are two types of elements in CSS. One are block elements and one are inline, inline elements. So each time you will put a block element that will start from a new line, but inline element will not start from a new line like image and spans. The default layout of in elements in this way is called the normal flow of a document, but CSS offers the position property to override it. When the position of an element is set to relative, it allows you to specify how CSS should move it relative to its current position in the normal flow of the page. It pairs with the CSS offset properties of left or right and top and bottom. Okay. Offset properties. CSS have these offset properties, left, right, top and bottom. And this will apply if the element is uh, have a relative position. And this is in pixels or EMs to move the items away from where it is normally positioned. The following example moves the paragraph 10 pixels away from the bottom. So what are we talking about? Position is relative and bottom is 10 pixel. You see this bottom property is uh, for its offset property okay changing an element's position to relative does not remove it from the normal flow other elements around it still behave as if that item were in its default position all right node positioning gives you a lot of flexibility and power over the visual layout of design it's good to remember that no matter the position of element the underlying html markup should be organized and make sense when read from top to bottom the underlying html markup should be organized and make sense when this is how users with visual impairment. Okay, what's it saying? It's good to remember that no matter the position of elements, the underlying HTML markup should be organized and make sense when read from top to bottom. Users with visual impairments who rely on assistive devices like screen readers access your content. The S22 relative and use a CSS offset to move it 15 pixels away from the top of where it is set in the normal flow. Notice there is no impact on the position of surrounding H1 and P tags. Okay. First of all, position is relative. And then on top, we want to move 15 pixels. From the top. You see that paragraph tag is not affected. Okay, so this is position. Now more 
uh, move a relatively position element with CSS offset. The CSS offset tell the browser how far to offset an element relative to where it was set in the normal flow of the document. You are offsetting an element away from a given spot, which moves the element away from the referenced side, effectively the opposite position. Offsetting an element away from a given spot, which moves the element away from the reference side, effectively the offset position. As you saw in the last challenge, use the top offset, using top offset moves the H2 downwards. Likewise, using a left offset moves an element to the right. Okay, so if top, all right, now I, I can understand this, yeah. This explains everything. Or to move the H2, 15 pixel to the right and 10 pixels up. This is H2 and to the right, right will be okay. So if we move, want to move this right, then we have to specify the position left and uh, move the H2 15 pixel to the right and 10 pixels up. If we want to move it upwards, then we will using opposite property I guess this is the challenge okay lock an element to its parent with absolute position the next option for the CSS position property is absolute which locks the element in place relative to its parent container unlike the relative property this removes the element from the normal flow of the document so surrounding items ignore it CSS offset properties top bottom are used to adjust the position. This removes the element from normal flow of the document. So surrounding items ignore it. Offset properties are used to adjust the position. One nouns uh, with absolute position is that it will be locked relative to its closest position in sister. If you forgot to add a position rule to the parent item if you forget to add a position rule to the parent item this is typically done using position relative the browser will keep looking up the chain and ultimately default to the what we have lock the search bar element to the top right of of its section parent by declaring position as absolute, give it top and right offset of 50 pixel. Search bar position is absolute. Okay. And top and right of 50 pixel. Top 50 pixel. Right. 50 pixel. Okay. Lock the search bar element to the top right of its section. Okay. So basically, absolute positioning is for locking the position of an element. All right. Lock an element to the browser window with fixed positioning. With fixed positioning. The next layer scheme that CSS offers is the fixed position, which is a type of absolute position that locks an element relative to the browser window. So absolute positioning is uh, uh, absolute position will also lock the element, but it's relative to the parent element. But fixed position is not relative to the parent element, rather it's locked to the browser window. Okay, similar, to, it's used with the CSS offset properties and also removes the element from the normal flow of the document. Other items no longer realize where it is positioned, which may require some layout adjustments elsewhere. One key difference between the fixed and the absolute position is that an element with a fixed position won't move when the user scrolls. The navigation bar in the code is labeled with an ID of navbar. 
change its position to fixed and offset it uh, zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. After you have added this code, scroll the preview window to see how the navigation style is in place. Position is fixed uh, and top is zero. Top is zero and left is also zero. Now Okay, so position, yeah. So now if I will move it, it's not going anywhere. And this top is relative to the browser window. Okay, cool. Push elements left or right with the float property. The next positioning tool does not actually use position but sets the float property of an element. actually use position but sets the float property of an element. Floating elements are removed from the normal flow of a document and pushed to the either uh, left or right of their containing parent elements. It's normally usually with the width property to specify how much horizontal space the floated elements require. S2 columns layout. With the section and aside elements uh, next to each other. Well, what is section and what is aside? Okay, section and aside. Uh, ID left. Good stuff. ID right. Okay. Now, what give the left at the item a float of left? and right to the float of right. Okay, I got you. All right, so their weights should all be uh, also be fixed. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is also fixed. Otherwise, if we will remove any width, that will be a problem. Uh, change the position of overlapping elements with the Z index property. When elements are positioned to overlap, using position absolute relative fixed sticky. When elements are positioned to overlap, the elements coming later in the HTML markup will be by default appear on the top of other elements. However, the Z index property can specify the order of how elements are stacked on top of one another. As you can see, a whole number and a dot are decimal and the higher values of Z index properties of an element move it higher in the stack than these with lower values. Add a Z index property to the element with a class name of first, the red rectangle and set it to the value of two so that it is covered the other element blue rectangle. Z index is two. All right, so now red element is on top of blue element. Okay. The, uh, the stuff coming later will be on the top of this element. All right, got it. center an element horizontally using the margin property. Another positional technique is to center a block element horizontally. Block element, okay. One way to do is set its margin value to auto. This method works for images too. Images are inline elements by default, but can be changed to block elements when you set the display to block element. Okay. Center the element on the page by adding margin. Auto. All right. Okay, so this one 
is learn about costly metric colors color theory and its impact on design is a deep topic and only the basics are covered in the following challenges on a website color can draw attention to the content evoke emotions or create a visual harmony use different combination of color can really change the look of a website and a lot of thought can go into picking a color palette that works for your concept the color wheel is a useful tool to visualize how colors relate to each other and it's a circle where similar hues are neighbors and different hues are further apart when two colors are opposite each other on the wheel they are called complementary colors they have the characteristics that if they are combined they cancel each other out and create a gray color however when placed side by side these colors appear more vibrant and produce a strong visual contrast combinations with their hex colors are red and cyan green and magenta blue and yellow this is different than the outdated rvb color model that many of us were taught in school which has different primary and complementary colors modern color theory uses the additive rgb model like one on a computer screen and the subtractive cmyk model like the printing read have promotion on complex subject these are many color picking tools available online that have an option to find the complement of a color However, color alone should not be used as the only way to convey important information because users with visual impairments may not understand the content. This issue will be covered in more detail in applied accessibility challenges. Change the background property of blue and yellow glasses to their respective colors. Notice how the colors look different next to each other than they do compared against the white background. Notice how the colors look different next to each other than they do compared against the white background. Okay, let's do this. So blue is RGB. R G and B. This is F. And yellow is I don't know. What is the color for yellow? Let me know it. Yellow is yeah F F F. Yellow background is all right. So if we will combine these two colors, all right. These are opposite of each other, and if we will combine these two. Then there will be a gray color. I got it. Okay, so everyone, fifty percent is complete on applied visual design. We'll see you, uh, see you in the next one, in the next section. Take care.